So in this tutorial I'm going to show a technique for removing a tracking marker uh, using, a, um, using a roto uh, to reveal a background essentially um, which I, and I'm actually going to use the same background as what we're using here it's just I'm going to offset it probably on the x-axis a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to patch a couple of markers maybe just one because the, the, the approach would be exactly the same for the other so if we just play this through and we can take a look I'm, I'm going to go for a, a pretty benign one in this particular case um, say for example these markers here they don't come into contact with the actor uh, they're staying shot for the entire sequence so they're pretty uh, you know you could easily clear them with a roto node but this is a good way of me actually showing this principle okay so I'm going to start with the background as you can see I've broken off a um, I've broken off a uh, from the from the plate here and I'm just going to add a transform node down this stream so we're looking at the we're looking at the shot through a transform node now and I'm just going to just nudge nudge this maybe just to the right by 30 pixels so essentially if I toggle this off now uh, on and off you can see that basically I've nudged the plate so if we focus on sort of this this area here we can see that that moves so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this area as a, as a patch so we've got a clean plate and what we're going to do is we're going to actually take our clean plate and punch a hole where one of these uh, markers is to reveal this clean area of the plate behind it okay so before I go any further I'm just going to put a grade node in here and I'm just going to gain up on just the blue channel uh, just so that we've got a very distinctive and clear, maybe even a little bit more than that, just so that we can differentiate the patch from the um, from from the uh, from the actual plate. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to need to do, I've I've actually already gone through this and I've already done it, um, is to um, is to track the marker. So if I just if I just show this, we can see that this uh, that this is uh, tracking this is tracking through a little bit of a lag there on my on my card um, but we can see that 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 that's tracking that's tracking that that marker quite nicely so pretty uneventful track there and again I don't want to get into tracking I've got plenty of other tutorials that uh, that address uh, the tracker node and various other uh, aspects of tracking in Nuke um, Okay, so what I what I'll do now is I'll go through the process of creating my uh, my patch, or or should I say the hole in the plate that is going to reveal the uh, the patch behind it. So I'll just add another stream here, and on that I'll create a roto node. Okay, so we're going back now. We're back at our original plate. You can see the difference if we if we. Uh, if I just put a number two uh, viewer on that and I just hold between them you can see that that's the plate that we're actually going to be punching the hole in um, and then it's going to be re revealing this behind it okay so doing the um, doing the patches is, is relatively simple uh, I always do it the same make sure that I'm, I'm clear about what frame I'm doing this on and then um, get my roto node up um, use an ellipse always always an ellipse or very rarely anything other than ellipse when it when I'm dealing with tracking markers if I hold shift control and alt it's a little bit of a handful but if you do that then you can drag out from the center of the um, of, of the offending area and it's uh, it's a great way of, get, of, of getting it absolutely nailed on and then once I've done that if I type E it creates this uh, it creates this feather area okay so that is my roto Okay. Of course, as this moves, then the roto isn't, so we need to connect it up. So again, I need to make sure I'm on my reference frame. This is the frame that I drew the roto on. And then I can bring up my uh, my tracking information and go to the transform. We can see that if I scrub this, we'll see that this is dynamic uh, because this is, uh, this is the tracking information. Uh, but if we look at the same information on the roto node, when I scrub, you can see that that, uh, that is inactive. So all I need to do is take the information from the tracking data just by 
clicking on the uh, by dragging from the holding down control and dragging from the animation button of the tracker and then just dropping it onto the corresponding animation button of the translate on the roto and then if I let go now we can see that both of them carry the same information and if we look at the screen we can see that our patch is moving with the tracker okay So now we just need to connect the two up. So to do that, I'm just going to merge. So I'll just select my roto node and merge the ro the roto node over the background. Okay. So straight away we're seeing some weirdness, and this weirdness is purely and simply um, it's purely and simply pre-multiplication issue we're seeing uh, the transparency through there um, and there's a couple of ways that I can deal with it I can deal with it in the roto node itself uh, simply by setting the pre-multiplication to RGB come in and take a look now we can see our, our patch uh, or should I say our hole there uh, in the in, in there and we can see the semi-transparency around the other side alternatively I can uh, leave that in its default state and in the merge node itself I can set that to matte um, and that does the same thing it basically just um, it basically just flips around the um, it flips around and uses the un, un -pre multiplied image from the A side of the pipe okay and because in the roto node, it's on, I haven't activated the pre-multiplication. Then the merge node does the pre-multiplication instead. Okay. The only other thing I need to do is I just need to invert that because obviously my color correction is um, is on the background plate, um, and that is pretty much it. If we if we come out now, uh, we can uh, we can see this. Um, I'll just turn off all my. Uh, on my notes from the properties panel so we can see that and we should see that little marker moving along nicely there of course that's um, I, I don't want to be able to see it as blue but this is where we do a little bit of a test um, and the way that I do the test is always the same and it's um, I, I recommend that you do this which is to get your tracker node the one that you've used to actually create the uh, the relationship between the roto and the, and the plate and make a copy of it and paste it down here somewhere and then connect that up to the merge node and then connect your viewer up to this okay and now what I'm going to do with this tracker is I'm just going to set it in the transform set it to stabilize what this means now is that um, is that rather than the rather than the tracking mark moving essentially what it's trying to do is it's trying to stabilize it so it moves the plate now the advantage of doing this is that we can get in really close into one area because this area is always going to stay in one place and then we can assess it so we can watch that area and look for any anomalies so if I just turn that off and uh, and then disable my grade node now we're looking at this offending area now and I can just watch it through the entire sequence looking for any anomalies like any glitches or any color uh, color changes between the uh, between the the rest of the background and the patch area and you can see that that's working really nice we don't we don't have any sort of discernible color changes we don't have any any weirdness sort of creeping into the area that's been patched so that's the end of this tutorial I hope that you found it useful I hope that you'll be able to apply this to your own uh, to your own projects you could see now that I could go on with this roto node and add additional splines to and, and effectively eliminate an entire line of markers it'd be incredibly easy to do that from this particular point uh, it would just be a, basically a duplication of the principle and I guess the final thing then is that when you're happy that you've tested it then get rid of that stabilization and um, and you're good to go okay so that's the end of this tutorial